Coach Todd, after uh, you know what happened last week, you know how would you assess the the, the way things went down? You, you know, as far as your your play calling and, and just the overall performance. Overall performance is pretty easy to assess. It was uh, well shy of our standard in just about every area. Um, you know, we've got to be smooth from top to bottom. That starts with me and uh, and my operation, making sure I get guys uh, you know in and out and prepared. And you know, I look forward to the next opportunity to to right some wrongs. Now, obviously, this offense has been based off of a lot of play action. Didn't really see a lot of that this this past week. Was there anything in particular that made you get away from it? Yeah, being in second and long and third and long the entire game. It's pretty hard to run your offense, um, you know, your base game plan when you're behind the sticks that much. And so if you don't get first downs and you don't get into drives, you're not going to get much of the normal down distance call sheet uh, called. And so that was the, the major factor. You know, there are a couple that we tried to run in there and, and obviously some that, that didn't have a lot of success. Uh, but mainly it was because we just didn't have the opportunities. One point there in the second half, you ran it with Derek like five times in a row, I think. Is that just trying to establish a mindset there at that point? or? Yeah, you know, I think that uh, certainly that's a foundation of, of who we are as an offense, you know, and again, uh, some of the situations in the game dictated uh, throwing the ball a little bit more, um, you know, but we're trying to, uh, you know, establish an identity and, and don't want to get too far away from that regardless of what the situation is. So, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to give the O line opportunities to fire off the ball and we're going to give Derek opportunities to break tackles and see runs multiple times and. Uh, I think that's that's probably uh, what you saw. Entire performance, Todd. What what surprised you the most? On that? Uh, you know, I I just thought uh, our sense of urgency and, and energy to start the game uh, wasn't where it needed to be, and uh, got us took us a little too long to uh, kind of wake up. You know, and and uh, that certainly put us behind the eight ball, put our defense behind the eight ball, and. Um, that's something that, that we've got to get fixed and get fixed quickly. Now, now, how, how do you, you think that, that is, and what were the conversations like on the sideline during like that first quarter? Yeah, you know, some of those conversations we keep in house. You know, you guys saw some of the conversations going on between players. Um, you know, to to give you a reason, uh, I will say honestly, I'm I'm not sure, but I know that whatever it is, we've been uh, turning over every stone to make sure it doesn't happen again. You mentioned how you know the sense of urgency just wasn't there. Now, how how do you fix that in, in a week's time? What what can you guys do to make sure that doesn't happen? Again? Yeah, getting back to the basics and the fundamentals, you know, and just doing the little things in our system the right way. Uh, it all starts there because if you just assume that the little things are going to be there, uh, you know, sometimes you you go to lean on them and they're not. And so uh, you know, it's really important for us, you know, to do those little details the right way uh, and have a great sense of urgency in our preparation. It's coming back from injury, uh, Taylor and, and Julio, too. Probably at games where I, I would think weren't up to their standards. Is that a little bit expected coming back from the, the long time off? Or, or you know, were there other factors that, that played into that as well? You know, I think any anybody we put out there on the field, there's a standard, uh, you know, that we expect to be met. And so I think both of those guys would tell you that there are a lot of people that didn't reach our expectation, our standard uh, on Sunday. So signaling, singling anybody out. Uh, you know, is a little bit irrelevant for me at this point. You know, I, I think all of us need to improve, and I think that uh, that expectation doesn't change whether you've been in there for 50 practices or, you know, 50 seconds. Uh, you know, if you take the field as a Titan, there's a certain way we do things. Just quick hitting the slants and crossers seem to be AJ's bread and butter a lot of times, probably for Julio, too, and counter the pressure. It didn't seem like you got into any kind of flow with those. Were they there? Or could they have been there? You know, I, th I think uh, I think that there are certainly some opportunities to hit them. Uh, I think that they're, you know, even the second play of the game, you'd see some of those quick hit and slants and play actions. They uh, are not play actions necessarily, but quick slants. You know, there are uh, a lot of determining factors to whether those quick hit and shots are going to be there. Uh, and certainly part of that is where we're at in the game. You know, dinking and dunking and hitting some some short passes. Uh, when you're down 18 points isn't uh, real conducive to coming back and winning. So a lot of stuff went into that. Uh, again, you know, we know the strengths of our players, um, you know, and certainly it's my job to put them in the best position to succeed. We just got to get into more drives so we can call some of that bread and butter stuff. 
lack of urgency you guys had earlier in, in the game, do you feel like you might have been able to go to a little more tempo to create that uh, earlier in, in the game? Because I noticed you did it a little bit later, but do you feel yeah. like you could have done it earlier? Yeah, we went to some tempo earlier in the game as well. Um, you know, did it out of a, a 21 set and, you know, and didn't have as much success. Again, if you don't pick up yards and sustain drives, tempo looks like a three and out. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, it, it's important for us to be able to move the chains and get the drive started, and then we can open up all those, uh, you know, other factors. What do they do well? What, what, what are the challenges in facing the Seahawks? And how important do you think it is to kind of establish the run early? Yeah, they, they play with a great demeanor and attitude. They're flying around the field. Uh, they're a well-coached unit, and, uh, you know, they're, they're playing hair on fire. So we've got to match their intensity, match the environment and uh, go out there with the, the right kind of mindset from the first snap. You mentioned the down and distance. How much of that was just losing battles up front, you know, especially on first down? And how, do you, how do you kind of fix that? I mean, did, 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 is that guys coming back from injury, being rusty? What, what do you kind of attribute that to? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think, as I mentioned earlier, there's no one position group that I think you could single out and say, you know, hey, this is attributed to them. There's... Uh, stuff to be fixed at every single group with every single position, and and certainly that includes uh, coaching. And so we'll we'll get that stuff addressed. Um, you know, we we play a certain brand of football around here, and part of that is, you know, uh, winning the line of scrimmage. And you know, we got to do that on a more consistent basis. You mentioned before that that AJ Brown kind of fits that playmaker mold, a guy you want to get the ball to. He didn't get a target until there were five minutes left in the first half. Is that something you regret and hope to maybe turn around moving forward? Yeah, I think sometimes we can get targets confused with opportunities, you know, and sometimes just because he wasn't targeted on a play doesn't mean he wasn't first in the progression, you know, and so um, I, I don't get too caught up into numbers of targets. Uh, there are certain plays that we, you know, design to make him primary in the read, and just because he didn't get the ball doesn't mean he wasn't primary in the read. You mentioned the environment, Coach. Just how tough is it to play in Seattle with the noise and all that? an offensive team in terms of communication? Yeah, you know, it takes everybody being on the same page, having great uh, communication, both nonverbal and verbal. Uh, you got to be efficient, you know, getting the calls into the, uh, you know, quarterback and, and handling all the, uh, you know, ebbs and flows of the games with poise. And, uh, you know, I've played up there a few times, so I, I know what it's like. And it's, uh, it, it's definitely a very loud environment. So we're going to have to be on top of all that stuff. With all the things that went wrong are being mentioned, what were some of the things that, you know, the positives that you were able to take out of Sunday's game? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think once we kind of woke up a little bit, you saw some fight, you saw some of the push in the piles, uh, you know, with Derek and consecutive runs. Uh, we just didn't see it consistent enough. You know, you saw A.J. break a couple tackles, make a, a nice catch on a tight window throw by Ryan. <laughs> uh, not a whole lot of positives that you're walking into the meeting room and saying, you know, hey, you know, we gotta we gotta get uh, more of this, but uh, it it showed up in small spurts. You know, Josh Reynolds back, and if so, how can he kind of be incorporated into this offense um, on a game day? Yeah, Josh is is working his way back. You know, and and uh, certainly shows a versatility at the wide receiver position. Can contribute. You know, can contribute to that group uh, with his expertise and, and veteran mindset. Uh, and certainly, you know, he, he knows the Seahawks from playing out there against them, uh, which, is, which is a nice uh, little bonus. So hopefully we'll see where he's at soon. You've challenged guys, you know, this week. I mean, do you notice guys kind of doing that amongst themselves? And has there got to be like a, maybe a balance uh, there as well? Yeah, we're all competitors. You know, I don't think there's a man in that locker room or in that uh, coaching staff uh, you know, that felt real good uh, on Monday morning, you know, and uh, we're, we're going to grind through this and, and figure out the way to fix the things that we need to fix. And I believe in the group that we have uh, and I believe in, in the accountability of this team and leaders holding people accountable, you know, coaches holding their players accountable and holding each other accountable. So, you know, I, I think we have the right culture here to, to bounce back quickly. Kind of find the most challenging yourself, Todd, after you know, first time in, in four years, I think, or so getting back to the play style, what was the biggest challenge, I guess? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think getting through that first rough patch, you know, where uh, you, you couldn't script a worse first quarter than we had, you know, uh, even on some bread and butter plays, you know, the, the sack fumble to the one yard line was a bread and butter keeper that we've run dozens of times around here, right? And so uh, getting through that first push of figuring out what's going to work, what personnel grouping you can get in to settle things down, all that, you know, working through that process, 
um, you know, uh, certainly can be more efficient. So.